Pneumatic tubes are systems that propel cylindrical containers through networks of tubes by compressed air or by partial vacuum. They are used for transporting solid objects, as opposed to conventional pipelines, which transport fluids. Pneumatic tube networks gained acceptance in the late 19th and early 20th centuries for officers that needed to transport small, urgent packages over a relatively short distances. Some installations grew to great complexity, but were mostly superseded. In some settings, such as hospitals, they remain widespread and have been further extended and developed in recent decades. A small number of pneumatic transportation systems were also built for larger cargo, to compete with more standard train and subway systems. However, these never gained popularity. History Historical use pneumatic capsule transportation was invented by William Murdoch. It was considered little more than a novelty until the invention of the capsule in 1836. The Victorians were the first to use capsule pipelines to transmit telegrams to nearby buildings from telegraph stations. In 1854, Josiah Latimer Clark was issued a patient for conveying letters or parcels between places by the pressure of air and vacuum. In 1855, he installed a 220-yard pneumatic system between the London Stock Exchange in Threadneedle Street, London, and the offices of the Electric Telegraph Company in Lothbury. While they are commonly used for small parcels and documents, including as cash carriers at banks or supermarkets, they were originally proposed in the early 19th century for transport of heavy freight. It was once envisaged that networks of these massive tubes might be used to transport people. Current use the technology is still used on a smaller scale. While its use for communicating information has been superseded, pneumatic tubes are widely used for transporting small objects. Or where convenience and speed in a local environment is useful. In the United States, drive-up banks often use pneumatic tubes to transport cash and documents between cars and tellers. Most hospitals have a computer-controlled pneumatic tube system to deliver drugs, documents and specimens to and from laboratories and nurses stations. Many factories use them to deliver parts quickly across large campuses. Many larger stores use systems to securely transport excess cash from checkout stands to back offices and to send change back to cashiers. NASA's original Mission Control Center had pneumatic tubes connecting controller consoles with staff support rooms. Denver International Airport uses many pneumatic tube systems, including a 25 cm diameter system for moving aircraft parts to remote concourses a 10-centimeter system for United Airlines ticketing, and a robust system in the parking toll collection system with an outlet at every booth. Pneumatic tube systems are used in science to transport samples during neutron activation analysis. Samples must be moved from the nuclear reactor core, in which they are bombarded with neutrons, to the instrument that records the resulting radiation. As some of the radioactive isotopes in the sample can have very short half-lives, speed is important. These systems may be automated, with a magazine of sample tubes that are moved into the reactor core in turn for a predetermined time, before being moved to the instrument station and finally to a container for storage and disposal. Until it closed in early 2011, a McDonald's in Adena, Minnesota claimed to be the world's only pneumatic air drive through sending food from their strip mall location to a drive through in the middle of a parking lot. Technology editor Quentin Hardy notes that renewed interest in transmission of data by pneumatic tube accompanies discussions of digital network security, and he cites research into London's forgotten pneumatic network applications. In postal service pneumatic post or pneumatic mail is a system to deliver letters through pressurized air tubes. It was invented by the Scottish engineer William Murdoch in the 19th century and was later developed by the London Pneumatic Dispatch Company. 
Pneumatic post systems were used in several large cities starting in the second half of the 19th century, but later were largely abandoned. A major network of tubes in Paris was in use until 1984, when it was abandoned in favor of computers and fax machines. In Prague, in the Czech Republic, the network extended approximately 60 kilometers. Pneumatic post stations usually connect post offices, stock exchanges, banks and ministries. Italy was the only country to issue postage stamps specifically for pneumatic post. Austria, France, and Germany issued postal stationery for pneumatic use. Typical current applications are in banks, hospitals and supermarkets. Many large retailers use pneumatic tubes to transport checks or other documents from cashiers to the accounting office. Historical use 1853. Linking the London Stock Exchange to the city's a main telegraph station. 1861. In London with the London Pneumatic Dispatch Company providing services from Euston Railway Station to the General Post Office and Hoban. 1865. In Berlin, the Raw Post, a system 400 kilometers in total length at its peak in 1940. 1866. In Paris, 1875. In Vienna, 1887. In Prague, the Prague Pneumatic Post. 1893. The first North American system was established in Philadelphia by Postmaster General John Wanamaker who had previously employed the technology at his department store. The system, which initially connected the downtown post offices, was later extended to the principal railroad stations, the stock exchanges, and many private businesses. It was operated by the United States Post Office Department, which later opened similar systems in cities such as New York, Chicago, Boston, and St. Louis. The last of these closed in 1953. Other cities, Munich, Rio de Janeiro, Buenos Aires, Hamburg, Rome, Naples, Milan, Marseille, Melbourne, Tokyo, Osaka, Nagoya, Kobe. In public transportation 19th century in 1812, George Medhurst first proposed, but never implemented, blowing passenger carriages through a tunnel. Precursors of pneumatic tube systems for passenger transport, the atmospheric railway were operated as follows. 1844-54, Dublin and Kingstown Railways Dalkey Atmospheric Railway between Kingstown and Dalkey, Ireland. 1846-47, London and Croydon Railway between Croydon and New Cross, London, England. 1847-48, Isambard Kingdom Brunel's South Devon Railway between Exeter and Newton Abbott, England, 1847-60. Paris-Saint-Germain Railway between Bois de Vessinet and Saint-Germain-en-Laye, France, in 1861. The London Pneumatic Dispatch Company built a system large enough to move a person, although it was intended for parcels. The inauguration of the new Hoban station on 10 October 1865 was marked by having the Duke of Buckingham, the chairman, and some company directors blown through the tube to Euston. The 550-metre Crystal Palace pneumatic railway was exhibited at the Crystal Palace in 1864. This was a prototype for a proposed Waterloo and Whitehall railway that would have run under the River Thames linking Waterloo and Charing Cross. Digging commenced in 1865 but was halted in 1868 due to financial problems. In 1867 at the American Institute Fair in New York, Alfred Ely Beach demonstrated a 32.6 meters long, 1.8 meters diameter pipe that was capable of moving 12 passengers plus a conductor. In 1869, the Beach Pneumatic Transit Company of New York secretly constructed a 95 meters long, 2.7 meters diameter pneumatic subway line under Broadway. To demonstrate the possibilities of the new transport mode, the line only operated for a few months, closing after Beach was unsuccessful in getting permission to extend it, Boss Tweed, an influential local politician, 
did not want it to go ahead as he was intending to personally invest into competing schemes for an elevated rail line. 20th century in the 1960s, Lockheed and MIT with the United States Department of Commerce conducted feasibility studies on a VAC train system powered by ambient atmospheric pressure and gravitational pendulum assist to connect cities on the country's east coast. They calculated that the run between Philadelphia and New York City would average 174 meters per second, that is 626 kilometers per hour. When those plans were abandoned as too expensive, Lockheed engineer L.K. Edwards founded Tube Transit, Inc., to develop technology based on gravity vacuum transportation. In 1967 he proposed a Bay Area gravity vacuum transit for California that would run alongside the then-under-construction BART system. It was never built. 21st century research into trains running in partially evacuated tubes is continuing. For further information see VAC train on Hyperloop, in money transfer in large retail stores. Pneumatic tube systems were used to transport sales slips and money from the salesperson to a centralized tube room, where cashiers could make change, a reference credit records, and so on. Many banks with drive throughs also use pneumatic tubes. In medicine many hospitals have pneumatic tube systems which send samples to laboratories. Technical Characteristics Modern systems reach speeds of around 7.5 meters per second, though some historical systems already achieved speeds of 10 meters per second. Further, modern systems can also be computer-controlled, allowing, among other things, the tracking of any specific capsule. Varying air pressures also allow capsules to break slowly, removing the jarring arrival that used to characterize earlier systems and make them unsuitable for fragile contents. In fiction, when pneumatic tubes first came into use in the 19th century, they symbolized technological progress and it was imagined that they would be common in the future. Jules Verne's Paris in the 20th century includes suspended pneumatic tube trains that stretch across the oceans. Albert Robert as the 20th century describes a 1950s Paris where tube trains have replaced railways, pneumatic mail is ubiquitous and catering companies compete to deliver meals on tap to people's homes through pneumatic tubes. Edward Bellamis looking backward envisions the world of 2000 as interlinked with tubes for delivering goods, while Mitchell Verne's an express of the future questions the sensibility of a transatlantic pneumatic subway. In Mitchell and Jules Verne's The Day of an American Journalist in 2889 submarine tubes carry people faster than aero trains and the society for supplying food to the home allows subscribers to receive meals pneumatically. Later, because of their use by governments and large businesses, tubes began to symbolize bureaucracy. In George Orwell's 1984, pneumatic tubes in the Ministry of Truth deliver newspapers to Winston's desk containing articles to be rectified. Robert A. Heinlein's 1949 novella Gulf offered a more neutral view of their use in general postal delivery, beginning with the 42nd issue of 181 issue Doc Savage magazine. Doc Savage's penthouse on the 86th floor of an unnamed New York City skyscraper is linked to his Hidalgo Trading Company warehouse boathouse hangar on the Hudson River waterfront by pneumatic bullet car nicknamed the Flea Run. Go Devil an Angel Wagon due to its 100 mile per hour speed and that plummets straight down from the penthouse 90 stories to a sub basement makes a 90 degrees turn to travel a mile and a quarter 60 feet below 34th Street and then comes back up to ground floor of the warehouse, presumably at a shallower but still steep incline. The interior of the car is heavily padded, with four seats, one behind the other bobsled fashion. Since the car does not turn around, the seats are designed to rotate 180 degrees, so that the passengers always face in the direction of travel. The acceleration is such that, when traveling down the tube from the 86th floor, no sensation of falling is experienced. 
The system is driven by enormous air compressors and compressed air receiver vessels housed on the roofs of both the Skyscraper and the Hidalgo Trading Company. In a sequence in the 1968 film Bezos Voles, Francois Truffaut shows the fast transportation of a letter through the underground pneumatic tubes system in Paris. In 1985, the movie Brazil also used tubes to evoke the stagnation of bureaucracy. At the start of each episode of the 1998 television series Fantasy Island, a darker version of the original, bookings for would-be visitors to the island were sent to Mr. Rourke via a pneumatic tube from a dusty old travel agency. The 1994 film version of The Shadow includes a sequence in which the camera follows a message capsule as it speeds through a pneumatic tube system. The implication is that The Shadow maintains a private network of tubes for the transportation of secret messages. The failure of pneumatic tubes to live up to their potential as envisaged in previous centuries has placed them in the company of flying cars and dirigibles is ripe for ironic retrofuturism. The animated television series The Jetsons featured pneumatic tubes that people could step into and be sucked up and swiftly spat out at their destination. In the animated television series Futurama, set in the 31st century, large pneumatic tubes are used in cities for transporting people, whilst smaller ones are used to transport mail. The tubes in Futurama are also used to depict the endless confusion of bureaucracy. An immense network of pneumatic tubes connects all offices in New New York City to the central bureaucracy, with all the capsules being deposited directly into a huge pile in the main filing room, with no sorting or organization. In Ghostbusters 2, the River of Slime under New York City is found by the Ghostbusters boys to be flowing through an old pneumatic tube line, a reference to the Beach Pneumatic Transit Tube. In the 1998 PC game Grim Fandango, pneumatic tubes play a role at Manny's office. In the American television show Lost, the Dharma Initiative's Pearl Research Station has a pneumatic tube system. The character Locke put his drawing of the blast door map in the tube without a capsule. It was sucked up into the tube, indicating the system still functioned. The tube from the pearl leads to a capsule dump. In Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse 5 pneumatic tubes are used as a way to transport information from one place to the next when covering news articles. In the popular video game Bioshock, pneumatic tubes transport various items throughout the fictional city of Rapture. In Portal and Portal 2, two other popular games, Aperture Science uses pneumatic tubes to transport larger scale objects such as boxes of all kinds throughout their enrichment center. Douglas Adams's 1998 computer game Starship Titanic features the SUCCU bus in almost every room a pneumatic pipe transport system which goes all around the ship. Players must understand and use the SUCCU bus in order to progress and solve the puzzles. Umberto Eco in his novel The Prague Cemetery has one character, Simon Eni, send a petty blue message by pneumatic post. Presumably these messages were on small pieces of blue paper. In the 2004 movie The Polar Express, the pneumatic transport cells and lead characters from the main control room to various places throughout the North Pole. In the CBS series, Person of Interest, a pneumatic tube network is used to avoid tracking of communication by electronic means. The network is shown in the Mafia War in the 21st episode of the fourth season, Asylum. In the 2014 movie Kingsman, The Secret Service, a four-seat pneumatic tube shuttle is used to link the downtown tailor's office to the country estate and training area.